Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Bravender. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist in the National Weather Service Central Pacific Hurricane Center. And I, I thank you for uh, joining for this rather last minute uh, test demonstration, if you will. And I'm interested to hear your feedback and uh, suggestions for this. Uh, we'll be talking about Hurricane Douglas, the 5 p.m. advisory package. Uh, right now, Douglas is located just over 1,500 miles east-southeast of Hilo. It's a Category 2 hurricane with winds uh, of 100 miles an hour. It's been strengthening through the day. Uh, it's located 1,500 miles east-southeast of Hilo. It's moving to the west-northwest at 17 miles an hour. Douglas is located over an area of warm water with very low wind shear, and additional strengthening is, is expected. Right now, it looks like it's going through what we call rapid intensification, where it uh, strengthens very fast. We expect that to continue for the next uh, day or so. And right now, the forecast has it becoming a Category 3 major hurricane by tomorrow. As it moves west-northwest, it'll move over increasingly cooler water and start to weaken. And, <clears throat> and as it approaches a state, uh, encounters some more wind shear, which may cause it to weaken further. Uh, but the next day or so, how strong it gets will have a big impact on what we see as far as impacts in Hawaii. You've probably been watching the, the track that's been very consistent uh, bringing it uh, into the islands. One thing I want to caution you is not to focus too much on the track itself. Our average errors uh, four days out are over 150 miles. So realistically, any part of the state could be directly impacted by Douglas. So don't focus too much on the forecast track as it exactly is now, because it will change over the coming days. The same is true with the intensity. Right now, the current forecast has a weakening to a tropical storm as it approaches, but don't focus too much on that weakening as well. Uh, even a, a high in tropical storm can cause significant wind damage. But uh, especially what we'll see over the next year or so is how strong Douglas weakens as it's going through this rapid intensification will have an impact as to what we see in the states, at how strong it eventually gets. And eventually, uh, as it starts to gradually weaken as it moves towards us, the stronger it gets now, the stronger it will be as it uh, goes through that weakening process. Impact-wise, we're, we're too far out to talk about specifics or specific islands, like I mentioned. Uh, but uh, with a with a tropical cyclone this strong, uh, could be significant wind damage. That's uh, one of the, the main threats of people associated with it, with a hurricane or tropical storm. There's also a significant threat for flash flooding. There's a lot of moisture, and we could see a, a lot of rainfall with this. It's too early to um, give any sort of numbers or, like they said, uh, impact-wise, uh, which areas would be affected. But uh, the, the significant, very heavy rainfall could cause some uh, significant flash flooding over a portion of the state. The other thing we want to emphasize to people is to prepare. Uh, you have three days of clear weather to prepare, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Go out, make any uh, anything you need to do around the house, get ready. Top off your top off the gas in your cars. Make sure you have a hurricane preparedness kit with 14 days food, water, medicine. Uh, also think about other supplies that you might not have from past year's kits: uh, hand sanitizer, face masks, items like that that would be important this year. The last couple hurricane or tropical threats that we've had to the islands were very slow approaches, giving us. Uh, a long time to prepare, several, many days, as we've been talking about this ahead of time. Douglas is moving fast now, it's uh, 17 miles an hour, and the forecast has it moving about 17, 18, maybe 19 hour over the coming days. So uh, there's only a limited time between now and then. We could see impacts from it beginning as early as Saturday night. So, so take action now, get ready, and uh, Hopefully, uh, the track will change, but hope isn't a plan. Uh, prepare like you'll be impacted. So that's the, the main message I wanted to provide to you. Uh, you can use as you see fit for any of your broadcasts or anything like that. 
Uh, I'll take any questions now. I did get one via email from Wendy in Maui now. Are there any vulnerabilities that Maui County in particular faces from a storm like this in terms of its geography or location within the island chain? Can you provide some area specific advice for Maui residents that would help our communities prepare for potential impacts? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the, the, attract, the, the approach that Douglas is coming in on from the east southeast could really hit any of the islands. Um, we saw with uh, Isel in 2014 and Darby in 2016, it moved up from the southeast, hit the big island, caused damage and impacts there, and then was really disrupted. It weakened quite rapidly after that. Uh, this could hit any areas. Uh, uh, it could hit Maui directly, it could hit Big Island, it could hit any part of the state. Uh, that's why we want everybody across the state to prepare as if they would be impacted from it. Uh, from, from this direction, no, no area is really protected uh, from impacts from it. Also, uh, the other thing uh, from an impact standpoint is uh, our, our terrain. Uh, we, we talk about heavy rainfall and flash flooding. Uh, it'll be accentuated by the, the terrain of the islands. The heaviest rain will fall inland, uh, get higher amounts, and those that heavy rain could also potentially cause landslides or debris flows that can be damaging as well. The other part of the question was, how can we communities prepare? Uh, as I mentioned before, how can our communities prepare? Uh, have a have a disaster plan. What are you going to do? Where will you go? Important things to consider are, are you in a, a floodplain? Uh, uh, are you susceptible to freshwater flooding? Rain falls, hits the ground, and causes flooding. Or are you in a coastal inundation plain? High seas sweep in and can cause seawater flooding from the coast. What sort of how strong is your house? Is it a single wall construction that doesn't have hurricane clips or tie downs? You might want to consider staying with a friend with a more robust house. Things like that would give you an, these are the things that you want to do ahead of time uh, so that once a hurricane like Douglas approaches, you're not scrambling to make these sorts of decisions. Now, it looks like we also have some other questions. So give me a moment while I come up with a look at these. A uh, question from Michael Phillips. How is CPHC working through the pandemic? Are people working in a mix of remotes in the NWS office? Will the will that shift in the event of landfall threat? Uh, that's a great question, Michael. As you can see, I'm doing this remotely. Uh, most of our administrative staff have been teleworking during the pandemic. Uh, the only people in the office are the, the mission essential forecasters who have to be there. They, they need our computer system in order to send out forecasts and warnings. Anybody non-essential, like me, I suppose, uh, is working remotely. We've relocated a lot of our workstations, spread them out throughout the office, so they're they're well distanced from each other. Uh, we've done that uh, in, in advance of any of this, knowing that we'll need to have more people in there. And uh, the other item, as we have a mix of people working in and outside of the office, communication becomes a very big issue. Uh, working through internal chat programs to make sure everybody knows what's going on and has everything covered. So that's the that's how we're we're handling uh, a hurricane threat that, like this during the pandemic. Another question from Michael: Of all the computer forecast models out there, are meteorologists are favoring one over the other or a blend of all. Right now, we're pretty early in the season, so we don't have any particular favorite model uh, that we've seen. Throughout the course of the year, we'll figure out what the biases are, um, whether it's north or south, fast or slow, uh, things like that. Uh, there's no particular one that we're favoring right now. Uh, one thing that you might notice with uh, Douglas itself is that uh, they're all very tightly clustered. That uh, has had one effect of causing people to focus too much on the exact track, thinking there's not a lot of spread in the models, there's not a lot of uncertainty. They're all focused on that one track. We want to make sure people realize that, that that track will change. It has been shifting and it will continue to shift over the coming days. Uh, but as it stands right now, there is a lot of consensus uh, showing that uh, Hawaii will see some sort of impact from 
uh, Douglas. Uh, let's scroll down the list. Uh, Colleen, has it been? Another question about the, the pandemic. Uh, has the pandemic impacted the CPHC staffing, funding, or ability to track hurricanes in any way? It hasn't uh, impacted our our, our schedules, as I mentioned, we're, we're, we're teleworking uh, remotely, uh, doing a lot more virtual uh, activities like this, and seeing how these work out, trying to figure out how we can still work through you to get the message to the public about what's coming in the weather. From the, from the weather service side, uh, we rely on media to communicate that with the, with the public, and uh, this is why we're trying to test out uh, situations like this to um, see if this works, to see if this helps. Uh, other question, what are the hazards of a fast moving system like this for the islands? That's a, that's a great question. We, we, saw, we saw firsthand from Lane what some of the hazards of a slow moving hurricane are uh, for long periods of rain. Uh, from a fast moving tropical cyclone like this, a one wind is a big one. Uh, as it's moving through, the, the speed of the system will be uh, considered in the strength of the, the wind field. So on the right-hand side of the track, with the, with the way the, the tropical cyclones spin in the northern hemisphere counterclockwise, uh, we would see stronger winds on that side. Uh, so a fast-moving system could bring more damage, could bring more surf or surge with it as, it, as waves are building up over the ocean. Uh, even though it's fast moving, I don't want to downplay the threat from flash flooding. Uh, tropical cyclones have a lot of moisture. Tropical air masses have a lot of water in them and it can rain out really fast. Uh, you don't need a prolonged period of rainfall to have intense flooding. Uh, er, earlier, uh, in the, in, earlier in the century, uh, actually no, that was 19, 1994, uh, tropical depression 1e uh, hit the big island it moved in from the east into hilo and it brought 14 inches of rain it brought that 14 inches of rain in six hours so even if something is only occurring for a short period of time six hours you can have uh, extreme amounts of rainfall and rain that that intensity uh, by that point the, the intensity becomes more of the issue the heavier the rain is the more of it runs off and the more damage you get so i don't want to downplay the the threat from flash flooding Will videos of these webinars be available for download after? Uh, yes, that's a, a great question. Uh, we're doing this live. I, I, I know I sent, uh, set this up a pretty short notice. For, for the same distribution list that we sent this link to, we'll send a recording afterwards. Uh, and also from some of the feedback I, I've gotten already, it sounds like it might be of interest to the public as well. So we'll... Uh, Take a look at it, see what the, the content looks like, and consider posting it to our social media page as well. CPHC resources available to media for Zoom interviews during the event. We can't use Zoom as a Department of Commerce organization. Uh, due to security restrictions, we can't install that. But we've been using other video conferencing software to do uh, interviews and things like that remotely. Because one of the impacts from pandemic is that we're restricted access to our office. Even, even I'm not working there. I'm working teleworking remotely. So there's no visitors allowed. So any interviews and communication we've been doing from a, doing remote like this uh, over the computer. Uh, question from Esme, uh, do, we, do you worry that people after fatigue because of the pandemic may not adequately prepare for a hurricane? Disaster fatigue is always a concern. We were seeing, we, we've seen that in past years. Uh, in 2018 is a great example. After the lead up to Hurricane Lane, uh, later when he had Olivia, people were, like he said, they had fatigue. They were worried about that. Here we've been dealing with the pandemic for months on end. Uh, it's been a hardship for people who aren't working, who don't have money to buy 14 days of food and water, or don't have an ability or don't feel safe going to the store to buy that much food. Uh, th these are these are real concerns, and unfortunately, I don't know how to how to mitigate that. Uh, hopefully, working through uh, you and your organizations and 
the, the platforms that you have talking to the public can help amplify our message that Douglas is a, a threat to Hawaii and that we need to prepare ahead of time. Uh, best case scenario, it the, the, the track shifts drastically, it moves on. We prepare now, this is July, this is the end of July. We still have the bulk, bulk of our hurricane season coming. So any prepared preparations we make now will have us set for the rest of hurricane season. So I think that's it. And wow, uh, 5.30. Uh, I had estimated this for 15 minutes and it looks like that's where we are. I, oh, one more question I see come in is from Kimberly. Is this Douglas system similar to any other systems that have occurred in the past, especially in expectations? I can't think of a good analog to compare this to. And it's hard to compare them to past systems because we don't want, especially because, especially this far out, four or five days out, we don't want people to focus on, oh, during that tropical storm or that hurricane, it hit this island and it didn't hit me, uh, so therefore I don't have to prepare. We don't want people to get that thought into their head just yet. Uh, so that's why we don't really want to make any comparisons to past analogs, because uh, really, uh, with, with the amount of error that we could see this far out in time, any of the islands could get hit. Uh, so we don't want to have people unnecessarily focused on what might have happened during one specific event in the past. I hope that answers your question. All right. Um, thank you all very much. Uh, as I said, I'll take the the send out the recorded video link and send that to the distri our our media distribution list. Uh, I'll also make a plug that if you didn't get this from me when I sent this out a couple hours ago, if it was forwarded on from somebody else, feel free to shoot me a message. We can get you added to our list so you get these directly. Uh, I'd also appreciate any feedback. Is this useful? Uh, what would make it better? Is this something that we should continue um, going forward after each advisory cycle? Would that be beneficial? And uh, with that, I thank you very much and say, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, say have a good evening.